Pitch Perfect and its sequel really struck a high chord in high note as well. I think more a note than a chord because there was no guitar, you know. But what about its sequel, Pitch Perfect 3? Is it really that bad? Or am I going to have to defend this film and give this film some good old-fashioned Big D justice? Well, that's what I'm going to do. Here's my review of Pitch Perfect 3 right now. Bad days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Noel, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a review of the 2017 musical comedy flick Pitch Perfect 3, released by Universal, directed by Trish Sai, or, or is it, no, she, C, sorry, <clears throat> ran by Kay Cannon and Mike White, starring just about everyone we've seen in the other films, including Anna Kendrick, Rebel Wilson, Haley Steinfeld, Brittany Snow, Anna Kim, Hannah Mae Lee, Alexis Knapp, John Michael Higgins, and Elizabeth Banks. Plus several others. Plus DJ Khaled, Ruby Rose, Mac Lantern, Guy Burnett, and John Lithgow. In this film, the Bellas now graduate from college, reuniting for one final performance together during an overseas USO tour. The film was released on December 22nd, 2017. Now, this was one of the films I actually got to see. I know I got to see Pitch Perfect 3 after I saw Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. <clears throat> and, of course, like its predecessor, it was Universal produced this along with Gold Circle. Unfortunately, unlike its two predecessors, this got mixed, more mixed to negative reviews. But still did alright and what have you, and became the second highest grossing musical comedy film of all time behind its predecessor. Which reminds me, if you have not seen my reviews of the first two films, I would gladly, I would appreciate if you checked them out by clicking on that card that will take you to my playlist, in case you might have missed them, or if you'd like to see them again. Now then. Okay, that will do it. Okay, on with the story. Three years after their final competition, the original Bellas have graduated from Barney University, but they all hate their jobs. Becca and Amy, whose relationships ended some time after the competition, are now roommates, along with Chloe in New York City. They're invited alongside the remaining original Bellas by Emily, now a senior and leader of the current Bar and Bellas, to an event under the impression they will be performing there, only to discover they are merely guests. Disappointed, they reconvene at a bar and express how much they miss performing with each other. Aubrey convinces them to join a USO tour headlined by DJ Khaled, hoping her father will wa finally watch her perform. As Stacy is eight months pregnant and unable to tour, Emily takes her place. The Bellas land at a base in Roa, Spain, greeted by liaison sur soldiers Chicago and Zeke. They also meet the three other bands on the tour, which use musical instruments, making the Bellas feel out of place. Chloe begins to fall for Chicago, and Fan Amy learns that Fergus, her estranged father, who is also a ruthless international crime lord, has found her at their hotel. The Bellas are invited to play at DJ Khaled's suite, where Becca develops a friendship with Khaled's producer, Theo who is impressed when she easily produces a mix of her own singing on Khaled's editing equipment. Moments later, the party is thrown into chaos while Aubrey accidentally starts a fire. Meanwhile, Amy sneaks off to a poker tournament, which is revealed to be a ruse by Fergus in order to get back into Amy's life, which she agrees to after believing he has changed. While the Bellas are recovering from ruining DJ Khaled's party, Stacy calls to inform them that she has given birth to a girl whom she'd named Bella. 
the noose inspires the group to continue performing, a decision which is met with acclaim from their crowds. Fergus and Amy gradually make up until he accidentally reveals that he is only trying to acquire her $190 million offshore account created by Amy's mother, causing her to disown her father. Meanwhile, DJ Khaled asks Becca to open for him without any Yarabellas. Becca declines the offer and returns to her room and doesn't tell the group she was asked. Yep. Now then, I'm going to go ahead and go to the final act plus ending. So, you know the procedure. You have five seconds to stop this video. Go to the description box below and fast forward to the time below. If you've seen the movie already, please continue. Okay, you've been warned. The Bellas, without Becca and Amy, are abducted and taken aboard Ferguson's yacht as an attempt to manipulate Amy. When she and Becca learn of the kidnapping, they sneak on board. Becca distracts Fergus by leading the Bellas in a performance of Toxic. Of course, you know, the Britney Spears song. While Amy sets up to and detonates a bomb. The Bellas escape the yacht, and Fergus is later arrested. After the Bellas are rescued by the military, Amy reveals DJ Khaled's proposition to Becca to the others. They encourage her to take the chance, agreeing that it is time to move on with their lives. They know they will stay connected to each other as a family. At the USO's final performance, Becca opens for DJ Khaled, then brings the Bellas on stage to sing their final performance, Freedom 90. Gail and John, the public announcers, when the Bellas originally competed, have filmed a Bella documentary, only to be appalled when... John realizes they didn't record the Bellas' final performance. Now the Bellas' lives are improving. Amy uses her new bankroll for tributes to singer's name, Amy. Aubrey works as a birthing coach. Blow's juice cart becomes an international brand. Chloe gets into vet school. Cynthia Rose enlists in the USAF flight school, Emily returns to Bart and into her songwriting. Lily reveals that she was quiet because she was possessed by Satan. The bomb snapped her out of it. And her real name is Esther. And starts a relationship with DJ Dragon Nuts. <laughs> Aubrey reconnects with her father. And Chloe and Chicago become an item. And Becca is now Theo's boss. End of story. So what did I think of Pitch Perfect 3? Well, let me put it to you this way. I feel like this film's very underrated and what have you. I can't understand why why in the kind of blooming world some of y'all hate it. Well, true, it's not as long as its previous two installments. But overall, I thought it was fun. Anyway, oh yeah, I almost forgot. I also saw, well, also saw Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Excuse me, apologies. I forgot about that. Oops. Still, I still had fun. No, I've only seen it. I can only recall seeing it twice. I watched when saw us in the theater, and I just more recently watched it. Yes, well, not yesterday, the, the other day. But anyway, unlike its predecessors, critics weren't impressed much. Ryan Tomatoes has a mere 28%, the worst for a film in the trilogy. They say it strains to recapture the magic that helped the original spawn a franchise, but ends up sending this increasingly unnecessary trilogy out on a low note. However, Cinema Score gave it a, a factually okay. A minus, which was the same score earned by its predecessor. Variety praised the cast and said that the new film doesn't add anything revolutionary to the Pitch Perfect formula. It still sounds like we're in middle period glee, written by someone who finds Ryan Murphy too solemn. But it's directed by Tish She. I mean Trish Say. 
The movie is bubbly, it's fast, it's hella synthetic clever, and it's an avid showcase for the personalities of its stars. Now see, I agree with that. The Hollywood Reporters wrote, What started out as a charmingly offbeat comic premise has inevitably degenerated into the sort of crass commercialism that probably would make the Bells themselves turn up their noses. But anyway, with, um, the Variety Review, I absolutely agree. I don't care what y'all think. I had just as much fun with this as its predecessor. Sure, it does blend a few other things, like a little, you know, surprises and a little action and thrills and what have you, but who cares? I had fun with it. So no said about it. Now, of course, Anna Kendrick won the Choice Movie Actress for Comedy at the Teen Choice Awards. Haley Seinfeld and Rebel Wilson were also nominated for that. And was also nominated for Comedy Movie. But I wouldn't, can't remember who won, though. I don't see in touch with those awards. Anywho... Uh, it still did fine, despite being dissed by everybody. The film, however, did well, making $185 million worldwide against its $45 million budget. Now, it had a soundtrack release, and I'm going to say that was really good, too. It's just so incredible. It has all sorts of fun-filled and what have you. So, I'm going to say it was just fine. Now, while this was intended to be a trilogy, there has been talking about a fourth one, but, well, we can't really guarantee you that and what have you, so let's not jump into any um, just-in-case or something like that. But anyway, I don't care what anybody else says. I have fun with Pitch Perfect 3. I don't care what you say. Because as always, we're all entitled to our own opinions. Thank you very much. For our cast, we have Anna Kendrick as Becca, still good as before. Rebel Wilson as Fan Amy. Very good. Of course, Haley Steinfeld as Emily. Good as well. Brittany Snow as Chloe. Anna Camp as Aubrey. All good. Han May Lee as Lily, a.k.a. Esther. Esther Dean playing Cynthia Rose and Chrissy Fitt as Flo. Let's see. And um, we have Ruby Rose in this. Um, before she was the original portrayer of TV's Batwoman as the leader of an oddly named band called Evermoist. The lead singer of this group named Calamity. Alexis Knapp is back as Stacy. She's good still. We have Kelly Jackal as Jessica and Shelly Regner as Ashley, who are fellas. Very good. Um, Matt Lanter played Chicago. He was good. Guy Burnett played Theo. Not too bad. Of course, we have John Michael Higgins and Elizabeth Banks once again playing John Gale, the commentary makers, and what have you. And finally, John Lithgow as Fergus. Well, I'm not saying he was fine, and what have you, so... a little... I don't know. I mean, well, he'd be more funnier when he appeared in another sequel, Daddy's Home 2, which came out a little after this. But I'll save that for another time. So Pitch Perfect 3, it might be a last call, but it might have, it may have, it, it does have its issues, but nonetheless, I find this film to be very underrated and fun and what have you. So, enough said. Would I recommend it? I'd say a one-time watch would be worth it. That, and that especially goes if you're a hardcore completionist. So, what did you think of Pitch Perfect 3? Let me know in the comment section below. If you liked the video, click the like button. Subscribe and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you the next episode of my Do You Remember series. And I'll be talking about Maxie's World. 
Yeah, another underrated chick series, but it's an animated series, that is. So anyway, if you like this, consider checking out my reviews for these other films. If you'd like, check out my review of this classic with John Lithgow, and that would be the original Footloose. It's my re-review of the film, the 1984 classic. Or go to the upper right-hand corner and see my review of, if you want some more of um, Anna Kendrick, you can check out my review of her recent hit film, Trolls Banded Together, from last year in 2023. Or if you would like maybe some more Rebel Wilson, check out my review of Isn't It Romantic from 2019. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D Sing. See ya.